And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is Ken Ring. Ken has just released his Weather Almanac for 2012 and has three copies to give away. Ken also gives us a good weather guide for our summer holidays. We welcome Ken Ring as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Ken Ring, the most Hi, famous man in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> the famous, most famous handshake in New Zealand. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> now, Ken, summer's coming. We need to know, are we going to have a good holiday this year, Ken? And you're the master at predicting the weather. Yeah, people <clears throat> are making plans at the moment, which is great. It's as well to know that there could be some heat waves. Heat in, waves? In January, yeah, the mm. last week of January, especially around the East Cape. Mm. Uh, and also in February. February is going to be a worry because it's going to be very dry for both islands mm. um, and it's going to be followed by a wet March in the South Island uh, but uh, you know we'll come to that in a minute and it'll be a very nice autumn so everything's <coughs> moved slightly mm. forward like that. Mm. Ken the big important question is will I be able to wear my bathing trunks? <laughs> well, I've never seen you in them, Gerard, so hey, remember the word my bits there. <laughs> remember the word trunks. You never hear it now, do you? You don't. You Bathing don't. trunks. We should have that on uh, Kiwi Art of Dreamtime. Yeah. Now, Ken, of course, uh, you're predicting this, and there's very few people in New Zealand now that don't know Ken Ring, but we would love, uh, just for those, those four people that don't know who Ken Ring is, just give us an explan a very quick explanation on how you predict weather using the moon. Sure, I just match, really, the, the tidal patterns to the uh, weather archives uh, that I obtained from the Met Service. So, and the premise is that the sea and the air are joined, mm. it's all one system, and as the sea goes up and down, it's actually the land that's going up and down, but mm. we see the sea going up and down mm. uh, because of the difference in the land and the sea, and the air is joined to the sea, so the air actually goes up and down as well. The land is going up and down. How much is the land? About a foot, isn't it? Uh, well, it goes up the, the whole of New Zealand goes up and down about eight inches a day. Eight inches a day? Australia, about 50 centimetres a day. Mm. And the land tide is the big tide. Mm. The water just finds its way wherever it can, mm. you know, with the land going up and down. And um, so in a place like Auckland, when the moon is in the sky, it's a low tide mm. because the land has pulled up more and left the water down there. So the land is the big tide and that's mm. why whenever we have these big earthquakes they're around the king tide times mm. and normally they're around the low tide times of the day. Uh, that's what the, the very big ones were in Christchurch at low tide because at low tide it's high land tide. Mm. It's all a fascinating thing. But remember there's about 3,000 kilometres thickness of land and there's only about a kilometre thickness of water. See what happens is you've got the moon and you've got this thing inside the earth that they call the inner core, mm -hmm. which they reckon is an iron ball. Mm -hmm. No one's been down there to look, <laughs> but they find yeah. lasers bounce yeah. off it. So they think. So when you have two magnets, like you know, you, you can feel a tension between them mm -hmm. and energy. Okay, every time the moon comes over, this thing inside the earth it does a wobble. Yeah. It can only exert pressure upwards because there's only upwards mm -hmm. from there. And so the land rises every day. That's mm. what the land tide is. It absorbs that pressure. When the moon is too close, like it was on the 4th of September last year, it was the second closest for the whole year, the land rise can't outpace mm. the stress that's going on. So it comes through as a shudder, yeah, yeah. as an earthquake. It's really just an increased wave coming through. We call it an earthquake because we have instruments that detect these shudders, mm. something past you know, uh, uh, two in the, in the scale. So that is the, the big tide, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the, it's the land tide. It's the land tide. And the reason why New Zealand gets so many, well, Japan gets the most mm. because it's right next to that Europe-Asia continent, which is the biggest land mass in the world, and that goes up and down the most. Mm. And Japan's sitting right in the join, there's the Pacific Plate, so ur, ur, and Japan cops it. Mm. We're similar but further down, they've mm. got Australia on its own plate, mm. going up and down, and there's the Pacific. So we're a mini version of what of happens Japan. in Japan. Oh. Yeah, so we have the second biggest number of earthquakes a year in, in the world. We have about 14,000 a year in New Zealand, mm. you know. That's why they call us the Shaky Isles. Mm. They come here, tourists, to experience a shake, you know, so <laughs> we shouldn't be too surprised. Now this all sounds very sensible, and it's 
There's the moon, there's the earth, we all know that, but there are those sceptics out there, aren't there, uh, Ken? And uh, yeah. uh, Are they still raising their voices and condemning you? Or you? Well, I'm happy to say there's more and more people who are realising that it is a common sense thing. Mm. Uh, not only that, uh, there are other cultures who have been doing this stuff for thousands of years yeah. before the Westerners came along and matching the moon up to uh, weather patterns and earthquakes. Yeah, I mean, there are systems in Japan and China that uh, d detect earthquakes well before they come. They evacuated 90,000 people from a city called Haiching um, about 20 years ago, saved all their lives just before an earthquake struck. Uh, the, the Japan tsunami, a lot of people were warned about that and were evacuated beforehand. Mm. We haven't sort of uh, read about that much in the media. Now, you've still got a lot of support from Christchurch, with a lot of supporters yeah. there. Well, I have a private email list mm. because, you know, I don't, I, uh, I don't want to cause any more anxiety mm. than, than I need to. So if people want to know what's going on, I have this email list, there's about 700 on it, and mm. uh, I give them an update of what... I mean, definitely the earthquakes are diminishing. They have been since April, uh, the three quarters of them between sept last September and now, mm -hmm. three quarters ended at the end of April. It's only been a quarter since. Mm. Uh, and, um, you know, it's been dropping by a couple of hundred a month. Now, the timeline is, uh, for example, the last time the moon was doing the same stuff mm -hmm. was 1994. 1994, there were 12,000 earthquakes in the Canterbury region. They were in Arthur's Pass. Nobody lives there, so... Mm, nobody they, noticed them. Nobody yeah. noticed them. Yeah. But there were 12,000. There's only been 9,000 this year. Mm. So 12,000 uh, significant earthquakes then, and which was bigger than now. Well, you look at 1995, uh, there was 2,000. 1996, it went down to 600. 1997, it was down to 400. So boom, 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 chopping boom, away. Yes, exactly. And that's what's happening now again. So, so what you're saying is that 2000, it was 2010 and 2011 is really a repeat of 1994-95. Yeah, there's a leeway of a year or two, but yeah. that's when the moon was last the closest uh, and in the same position, and Christchurch was again in the firing line. So it's a big cycle, and it comes around. You go back every 20 years or so, mm. and you'll find that that's where the clusters happened. Well, Ken, thank you very much for coming in today with your brand new almanac. Ken, can we have some copies to give away to our viewers? Yes, we've got three here. Three and, copies. Uh, I'm happy to, uh, for them to go to good homes. Th three good homes. Now, Ken, we always have a question. You have the honour of asking the question. OK, what planet beginning with M and ending with N, uh, with two O's in the middle, uh, <laughs> is the um, main thing that I use in terms two. of its orbits? for wow. weather, pr weather prediction. That's a, that's a, a hard, hard one. one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, viewers out there, Jared at thebeatgoeson.co.nz. Just email me and in the subject line, write that little word starting with M with a couple of O's after it and then finishing with an N. And uh, you could be one of the lucky winners of uh, the 2012 Predict Weather Almanac with Ken Ring. So Ken, thank you for coming in here today. and. Uh, just, a, just in case somebody's just tuned in, just a quick thing on the weather this summer. What's uh, it's? Yeah, be, it'll it'll be slow uh, taking off, um, but uh, there'll be some heat waves at the end of January, the end of February, and uh, later on in the year a bit of flooding. But uh, February's the time to take your break. Henry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.